Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to simple linear regression. As always, if you find this video to be useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. With a simple linear regression, we examine the relationship between two continuous variables. And the word simple, in this case for linear regression, means that we just have one predictor variable. A multiple linear regression involves multiple predictor variables. So here we're just talking about a simple linear regression, one predictor variable and one outcome variable. We use regression to predict the score of a criterion variable, an outcome variable, using the score of the predictor variable. So let's use an example. Let's say that we have some specific assignment involved in a counseling training method. And after the training course, after the assignment is complete, later on those students will take some sort of comprehensive examination. And we have a continuous score for this assignment. Let's say it's between 0 and 100. And we have a similar type score for the comprehensive exam. So we want to use the assignment score to predict what the exam score will be. In that example, the predictor variable would be the assignment, and the criterion variable, the outcome variable, would be the comprehensive examination. In order to predict the value of the comprehensive examination with the assignment value, we need to plot a regression line. And this is known as a line of best fit. This regression line is based on what's referred to as the least squares method. Now to understand the least squares method, first you have to understand the concept of a residual. So when we have these data points plotted on a graph, and we place a line on that graph, the points would be the actual scores that we have, the observations from a predictor variable, and the line would represent the predicted score. The difference between the actual observations and the predicted score on that line is residual, otherwise known as error. The least squares method plots a line so that the sum of the squares of those residuals, the sum of the squared residuals, is going to be minimized. This regression line, based on the least squares method, can be summed up with this equation, y equals mx plus b, where y is that outcome variable score. That's the value that we're trying to predict. x is the score that we are observing, so the assignment score. Y would be the comprehensive exam score. M is the slope, and that's the amount of increase or decrease we see in the outcome variable for every one unit of change in that X variable. And then B in this regression line equation is the Y intercept. So that's the value of Y when X is zero. So it's where the regression line crosses the y-axis. If the value of m, the slope, is positive, we will have a line like we see in this graph here on the bottom right, a line that moves from the lower left to the upper right. If the slope is a negative value, if m has a negative value, the line would start in the upper left and move to the lower right. So with a positive slope, as the value of x increases, the predicted value of y increases. The negative slope, as x increases, the predicted value of y decreases. The null hypothesis for a simple linear regression is that the slope, the value of m, is equal to zero. Now let's take a look at the elements of a simple linear regression. Well, it's fairly straightforward for linear regression, we have one independent variable, 
measure the continuous level of measurement, that's interval or ratio level of measurement. And these levels of measurement are fairly similar. In a ratio level variable, you have a meaningful distance between the observations and you have a true zero. So if you think about measuring temperature and the Kelvin scale, that's a ratio level of measurement. There's a meaningful difference between the points on the scale and a zero on the Kelvin scale represents an absence of the construct it measures, heat. Interval is similar except it does not have a true zero. So consider the Fahrenheit scale. The Fahrenheit scale has a zero, but that zero doesn't represent an absence of heat. This independent variable is also known as a predictor variable or an explanatory variable. For linear regression, we also have one dependent variable. And again, measured at the continuous level of measurement and the term outcome variable and the term response variable are used as well to refer to the dependent variable. Now let's take a look at the assumptions for simple linear regression. Like many statistics, our data have to meet assumptions in order for the output of that statistic to be valid. Simple linear regression has four assumptions. The first is the assumption of independence of residuals. All the residuals in regression must be independent of one another. This is not an assumption that we test. Rather, this is an assumption that would be a product of the research design. The next assumption is the assumption of normality. The residuals in a regression must be normally distributed. And typically, we use a few different methods to assess whether we're working with a normal distribution or not. One would be the Shapiro-Wilk test, and this is often used with an alpha of 0.05. So a result on a Shapiro-Wilk test of less than 0.05, in that case we would assume we violated the assumption of normality, and a probability value greater than 0.05 would lead us to believe that we have met the assumption of normality. To assess normality, we also want to look at skewness and kurtosis, as well as a histogram of the residuals. The next assumption is the assumption of linearity. And that means that we have a linear relationship between the predictor variable and the outcome variable. So we can assess the assumption of linearity using a scatter plot. And we're looking at the points plotted on the scatter plot and assessing whether they essentially form a straight line or not. We want to make sure that the relationship between the predictor variable and the outcome variable is not curvilinear. The last assumption for simple linear regression is the assumption of homoscedasticity, or equal variances. The variances of the residuals must be the same for every point across the line. And like the linearity assumption, the assumption of homoscedasticity is also tested by looking at a scatter plot. We can see the regression line and all of the observations, so we can determine the residuals, and we're looking to see that the variances of those residuals are equal for all of the points on that line. It's important to note here with simple linear regression that we are talking about a relationship between an independent variable and a dependent variable. And the regression itself doesn't speak to any type of causality. The two variables may be related, but that doesn't mean that one variable is causing the other. The regression may be used as a piece of evidence to demonstrate that when combined with additional evidence, but alone the regression does not tell us about causality. I hope you found this introduction to simple linear regression to be helpful. Thanks for watching.